when Facebook was first expanding, they used a timeless military strategy to win their most crucial first users. And you can use this strategy to attack your toughest projects. It leverages hidden complexity to lend devastating power to simple actions. This is Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. When Facebook was starting in the mid-aughts, it was only available at colleges, and it wasn't easy to win new users on campuses that had their own social networks, because who wants to join the network nobody is on? That is not where you find the big parties. That is not how you spy on your crush. There was no point in promoting to students who already had better alternatives. Facebook would waste their limited resources, driving themselves out of business, and there were plenty of competitors they needed to outlast. An established network at a college was a barrier to winning over any user at that college, a defense, if you will. Facebook needed to break through those barriers. So they used what they called a surround strategy. Instead of directly trying to get users on a given campus, they got them indirectly. Facebook's surround strategy was borrowed from the pincer military strategy. When you're up against an opponent with strong defenses, it's often not the best use of your resources to attack them head on. It's better to focus on the flanks. Hannibal used a pincer strategy in one of the greatest military upsets in history at the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC, sending the Roman Empire into a panic. As the Romans attacked from a concentrated center, the center of Hannibal's forces fell back, creating a crescent shape that helped them attack the flanks. Eventually, Hannibal had the Romans surrounded. The Romans lost so many men that day, they had to lower the draft age to replenish their forces, and they reverted to using human sacrifices to try to please the gods. Facebook used this pincer strategy to indirectly win users at Baylor University in Texas, which already had its own social network. Instead of promoting Facebook to users at Baylor, they focused on campuses near Baylor. There weren't already competing social networks at UT Arlington, a one and a half hour drive to the north, Southwestern University, a one hour drive to the southwest, nor at Texas A&M, a one and a half hour drive to the southeast. While Facebook wasn't wasting resources trying to get Baylor students to switch social networks, those students started to hear about Facebook anyway. The students in these surrounding colleges were former high school classmates of the Baylor students. They were driving to one another's campuses to bong beers and eat jello shots. They were hearing rumors their high school sweethearts were getting naked with half the campus. They were laughing maniacally upon hearing the former bully was found passed out naked with an armadillo. To get the dirt, to creep on one another's profiles, or sometimes to just stay in touch— They, too, needed Facebook accounts. So without any promotion at Baylor, Facebook started winning users at Baylor. This surround strategy worked better than people expect it to. To understand why, think about the birthday problem, which I talked about on episode 236. How many people have to be in a room for a 50% chance two of them have the same birthday? Most people guess 180 or 150, but the real answer, only 23. The odds of shared birthdays climb rapidly as you add the first few dozen people to the room. Network effects between each person's potential birth dates quickly add potential matches. Adding one person to a room of 20 people doesn't add just one potential match, it adds 20. Facebook's surround strategy leveraged these network effects. The colleges they focused on didn't have social networks, so Facebook quickly became very appealing as they added new users. Meanwhile, Facebook also became more appealing to the students at Baylor. Who wants to use a social network that only has students from your college? With each new user Facebook added in a neighboring campus, they added multiple contacts to potential new users at Baylor. After someone heard about Facebook enough times, they had to sign up. As Hannibal's men surrounded Rome's, 
There were more angles from which each soldier on Hannibal's front could attack soldiers on Rome's front, but not vice versa. A complementary strategy to the pincer is also the pocket, or isolating small portions of a battalion to conquer them bit by bit. Now, how can you use this surround strategy on some of your biggest and most intimidating visions? When you want to accomplish something that's too big to attack head-on, use the surround strategy to break down the project's defenses. Here's how to surround and conquer your toughest projects. One, make a list of all the things you'd need to know or have to accomplish your goal. Two, brainstorm ways you could learn those skills or gain those resources with smaller projects. Three, take on the smaller projects that are most interesting to you or that use your existing resources. As you take on these smaller projects related to your target project, network effects take over. The skills and resources you gain will make the larger project seem easier than it would otherwise, and you get some successes to build your confidence along the way and learn the skill of shipping like I talked about on episode 265. Here's a very simple example. Let's say you want to read a Shakespeare play, but you can't keep track of what everyone is saying in that language that doth make one scratch one's head. Do this. Watch the movie, read the Wikipedia page, listen to the podcast, finally read the play. By staking out the easier-to-conquer territory in your mind, it's easier to conquer the more fortified territory and run back for supplies or a reminder of what the heck is going on based upon the other ways you've already heard the story. Other creators use this surround strategy, whether they say so or not. Before the Steves, Jobs, and Wozniak built their first Mac, they worked on blue boxes they used to tap into phone networks and make prank calls. It was just a fun and mischievous and illegal project, but it helped build their collaborative relationship on something smaller and less complex. Henry Ford got a job working on steam engines while running experiments in his garage to perfect the internal combustion engine. He made a living gaining the background he needed and making connections with potential investors, while on nights and weekends he tinkered on the finer details. Michelangelo didn't paint the Sistine Chapel ceiling from scratch. He had libraries of plaster-casted drapery and terracotta body parts he mixed and matched to draw compelling figures in his scenes. I personally use the surround strategy whenever I can. For example, I want to write fiction, though I'm not a huge fiction reader myself, but I do like movies, so I've been reading screenplays of my favorite movies and reading the novels those movies are based upon while dabbling in short stories under a pen name and working on my stories telling skills in my nonfiction writing whenever possible. So I'm learning to love fiction while working on my fiction writing skills. In fact, all my work is a surround strategy for conquering new books. Each of my tweets, my weekly Love Mondays newsletters, my podcast episodes and articles and notes in my Zettelkasten are experiments with progressively larger ideas, the best of which build into a book every few years or so. The next time you're dreaming about something that seems impossible, surround it with projects that are possible, then your bigger dreams will be easier to conquer. Thank you to our newest Patreon supporters. Thank you to Susan Delaney. One thing I've learned in over a decade as an independent creator is to invest in ideas. They really are everything. Most of them don't work out, but the ones that do can be big. I had one idea that led to a book deal and transformed my life. I had another idea that connected me with a company that later sold to Google, which brought a surprise payday. Big ideas start small, and the place I share my ideas first is my weekly newsletter. It's called Love Mondays, and each week I share a big little idea about how to break through to become a true original and make it as a creator. I also share my favorite quotes and books and tools for thought. Think of Love Mondays as like a shot of creative fuel to start off your week. There's several thousand subscribers. We're having a good time. Join Love Mondays at kdv.co slash newsletter. That's kdv.co slash newsletter. You might have noticed I don't have ads on Love Your Work. I haven't had them for a long time now. In fact, a big company whose name you would definitely recognize offered me money to advertise in this show recently, and I had to turn it down. Why? Because 
Some money feels good. Some money feels not as good. When I see that somebody bought one of my books, that feels good. When a company advertises on the show, I mean, it's money, but that doesn't feel quite as good. Another kind of money that feels really good is the money I get from my Patreon supporters. It feels like an honest exchange. It's a vote of confidence that they like the show. Since I myself support a number of creators on Patreon, I know it feels good to vote with my dollars and support the kind of work I would like to see in the world. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Make the kind of podcast I want to listen to and share the ideas I want to see in the world. So if you like the show, a great way to let me know is to support the show on Patreon. Even a few bucks a month helps. It really adds up over all the dedicated listeners, and it motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing. If you'd like to support the show, visit the Patreon page at patreon.com slash You'll see the different levels and perks available. Even if you're on the fence, check out the page. Again, it's at patreon.com slash That's patreon.com slash Thanks for your support. Love Your Work is brought to you exclusively by our Patreon supporters, including top supporters Jeffrey Mason and Bob Rosen. The theme music for Love Your Work is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadaby, Inc.